So calculus time, really quick. Don't worry if you've never taken a calculus class or if the last time you took calculus was like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that is fine. I have not taken a calculus class since 2002, um, my senior year of high school. And even like throughout my whole PhD and grad school and everything, I've never taken a calculus class. So fun. Um, but it's okay because you don't technically need to worry about all of the, the deep calculus math here. We just need to worry about a, a tiny slice of it. Um, so in general, there are two reasons why we even care about calculus. The first is to find the slope of a line um, and how steep a line is. In regular algebra, like back in eighth grade and ninth grade when you were um, learning algebra, you drew lines that were just, they had like a slope and an intercept and you could draw how steep a line was. Um, but once you get into curvy lines, um, curvy lines have all sorts of slopes. Um, depending on where you are in the line. If you're down here, the slope is pretty flat. If you're right here, that slope is pretty steep. And so the slope is all over the place. If you're right here, the slope is almost vertical. Um, so what calculus lets you do is it find, lets you find the slope of a line at different points. And this is something called differential calculus. Um, that's just a version of calculus that was invented for finding slopes. Um, there's also... Um, you can also use calculus to find the area under a line. So in this situation here, if you want to find how big or kind of the area of this yellow section here or the area of this blue section, you can use calculus to do it. And this is something called integral calculus. Both of these types of calculus are used in economics. We are not going to touch integral calculus at all in this class. Um, so don't worry about that. We are going to look at differential calculus because we care about slopes, but there are like a billion tools that help you find these, these formulas for slopes and it's, it's simplified, so don't worry. But this is the thing we care about the most, is this differential calculus. Um, so, a slope. So a quick review of algebra, um, back when you learned how to draw lines. You probably remember this equation here, this y equals mx plus b. In eighth grade, they, they taught me that this is like y equals mixing bowl, is mx plus b, yay. Um, sure. What this really means is it's a way of drawing a line on a graph. And each of these numbers means something. y is just a number, and x is just a number. Um, m and b are special numbers called coefficients. So m is the slope. And what that means specifically in math language here is it's the rise over the run. So as you change um, x um, it, or change y, it's y is going to go up some amount and then x is going to go over some amount. So it's this idea of rise over run. That's going to be the slope of a line. The b part is just a number that shows the y-intercept, where this line crosses the y-axis. So with this equation, this y equals mx plus b thing, you can draw a line on a coordinate system with, you can draw any, any sort of line. Um, so again, the slope is this idea of rise over run. So if the slope is like two, that means you're gonna go up two and then over one because it's two divided by one. If the slope is one third, that means you're gonna go up one over three. If the slope is negative two fifths, it means you're gonna go down two and over five. Um, so that, that's what's that, what that is measuring. That's the slope, is how steep of a change you get. Um, so if you have an equation like this, y equals two, 2x minus one, what that looks like on a graph, it means that it's gonna cross the y-intercept here this negative one means it's going to be at negative one there. And then the slope means you're going up to, this is really just two over one. So you're going to go up two over one. And there's a point. And then up two over one. And there's another point. And up two over one, etc. And so you can draw a line, and that is your 2x minus one. Um, once you know that, you can just plug in whatever number you want. So if you want to say, what would y be if x was 10? Then you would just plug 10 in here. So 2 times 10 is 20, minus 1 is 19. So y would be 19 up here. So you could plot this point at 10 and 19. It would be up here somewhere. Okay, so that's drawing a line. If you have something like this, y equals negative 0.5x plus 6, 
um, means it's going to start at the y-axis at 6, and then it's going to do something different here. This negative 0.5, this is tricky to see with this rise over run idea because it's not a fraction, but if we rewrite this as 1 over 2, because that's negative, that's negative 1 over 2, um, that's the same as negative 0.5, that means we're going to start at 6, we're going to go down 1, and we're going to go over 2, and then down 1 and over 2. So if we look at the graph, this is what it looks like. We start at the y-intercept at 6, and then we go down 1 over 2 and then down one over two. And we end up with this line that goes all the way down like that. Okay, so that is how you draw a line with algebra. Um, if we were in person, I would have you get into groups and graph these different things to get practice. Um, we're not gonna do that, but I am going to quickly show you how you can actually do this without like manually drawing these things. You can actually use a website that is a graphing calculator that will graph these things for you, which is delightful. Um, that website is some, it's called desmos.com. It's free. Um, you can make an account that lets you um, store um, the, the different uh, graphs that you make, but you don't have to. Um, so let me go ahead and open up Desmos here. So if you go to desmos.com, What we can do, here, we'll move this over here so you can see some of the things we're going to plot. There we go. Okay, so if you click on Start Graphing, it will open up a graphing calculator for you. And we're going to graph a couple of these so you can see what they look like in a graph. Let's shrink this down. Just thinking about it. There we go. Okay, so in Desmos here, we want to graph this first one, this 5x plus 2. So before we graph it, let's think about what it's going to look like. It's going to start at 2 at the y-intercept, and then it's going to go up 5 over 1, and then up 5 again over 1. So it's going to be a fairly steep line starting at 2. So if we come into Desmos and we say y equals 5x plus 2, there's our line, and if we zoom out a little bit, we can see the line goes up. It's pretty steep. You can hover over this line. If you click, you can see as it changes. So if we get up to like um, where x is 6, then y is going to be 32. So that's neat. So we have a line. Um, any of these other things, we can do the same thing. So if we say y equals x minus 1, that means it's going to start at negative 1, and then it's going to go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, etc. So if we say y equals x minus 1, there's our line. It starts at negative 1 right here, and then it goes up 1, over 1, all the way up. Um, and that works for all of these here. If we want this 0.33x minus 1, we can say y equals... 0.33x minus 1. So it's going to start at negative 1. It's going to go up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3. And so that is not as steep as this red line that has a much bigger slope. Um, if the slope is negative, like the order of this x and y intercept here doesn't actually matter. So if you have an equation like this, y equals 6 minus 2x, that trips people up sometimes. They will think that the y-intercept is 2 because it's the second number there, but it's not. That is still the slope because it's the coefficient for x here. So that means the slope is going to be negative 2. So we're going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and we're starting at 6. So we can plot that here. We can say y equals 6 minus 2x. So we're going to start at 6. And then we're going down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Okay? So that is how you graph stuff in Desmos. And it's a delightful program. You'll be using it a lot in your problem sets. Um, you could theoretically do stuff like this in Excel. But the way you do this in Excel is you'd have to make, you'd have to build a formula and actually like hard calculate these numbers and then draw a graph. So you'd have to make like a whole table of values that show like 0, 2, and then 0. 0.5, 
4.5, like figure out all of the numbers and then have it draw the line. And you don't want to do that. Um, Desmos makes it way easy to do that. And you can zoom out and that's pretty art. Yay. Okay, so that is Desmos. That makes it way easy to graph lines. Um, so use that in your problem sets and you'll be a lot happier with life. Um, so let's move on to this. This is where life gets a little bit complicated though. Um, how do you figure out the slope of this line? How steep is it? How shallow is it? And it changes all over the place. It is fairly shallow. Um, oh. Oh. It is fairly shallow when you're down in, let's get the pen. When you're down in this world here, it's not rising very much. When you're in this world here, that's pretty steep. It's going up and up and up. Then it starts leveling off here. It's no longer, like once you get to this point here, the slope is actually like completely flat. And then it starts speeding up and then it starts, it looks fairly constant and steep on its way down there. But the slope in this graph is different at every single point. There's no single slope. So every x value in this graph has a different slope and a different rate of change. Um, and so what you end up having is you don't have a single number for the, for the slope like we've been seeing. Like we said, the slope is 5 or the slope is negative one third. That's a single number. It's going to be negative one third all across the line. When you have a curvy thing like this, though, you don't have a single number. You actually get what is called a formula or the official term for it is a derivative. So derivative is the slope of a curve. In regular lines, the derivative is easy. It's just a single number. In curvy lines that have like exponents in them and other things that, that make them curve, then you end up with kind of a different type of formula that explains what the slope is at each of those points. So here's kind of basic way of calculating the derivative. And I will have videos on the course website um, linked to Khan Academy. Um, that show you kind of other ways of calculating this stuff, other examples of, of finding derivatives. But again, you don't need to know this in super detail because um, you can actually plug this into a website and it'll tell you the derivative without having to calculate it. So I will show you that in a minute. But before we get there, let me just show you the basic way of figuring out a derivative. So this curve right here, this is the graph for y equals x squared. This is from Desmos. It's just a screenshot. You can graph the same thing in Desmos. Um, so if we want to know the slope of this line at different points here, like what is the slope right here? That looks like some sort of slope. It looks like it's steeper up here, and it looks like it's pretty much flat here. We can actually figure out what that slope is given a formula. To figure out that formula or the derivative, we use something called the power rule. Um, and if you took calculus back in high school, you did this. Um, this is like the one thing I remember from calculus. Um, and it's only because I watched Khan Academy a few years ago to remind myself of it. The power rule says if you want to figure out the derivative for this thing, you take an exponent, if there is an exponent, and you move it down in front of the coefficient, and then you reduce it by 1. So that means we take this 2 and we rewrite this as y equals 2x because we move the 2 down. And then we bump that 2 down a number. So it's going to be 2x to the first power. So that's the rule we follow, is you move the exponents down to the coefficient and then reduce the exponent by 1. So we end up with 2x to the 1. x to the 1 is just x, so we actually just ignore that. This prime symbol here, y prime, that just means it's the derivative of y. That's just the symbol for knowing it's a derivative. Okay, so we have y prime equals 2x. That's just the slope of the curve at whatever x you have. So why that matters is if we say, what is the slope when um, x is equal to 1? If we multiply 2 times 1, then that will tell us the slope right here. The slope is 2. And if you look, it actually is. You go up 2 over 1. Or if you go down to over one here, if we draw a line right here, the slope of that line is going to be two, which is what it is right there at x equals one. When we have x equals two, 
the slope is actually 4. Um, because we're going to go, here's x equals 2, we're going to go up 4 over 1, and we're going to go down 4 over 1. And so that is our slope when x is 2, is 4. It's twice as much as it is back here at 1. Or, yeah, at 1. So that, that's what the derivative shows us. It's the slope of that curvy line at whatever x value we care about. And the way we did that is we took whatever exponent there was, brought it down, and then reduced it by 1. That's the shortcut for it. So if you have something like this, this is going to be a really curvy line. If you plug this into Desmos, it's going to be all over the place. Um, the way we calculate this is we follow the power rules. We take this 3, bring it down. So it's going to be 3 times 3x. And then we're going to change this to a 2. Then we're going to bring this 2 down. So it's going to be 2 times 4x. And then we're going to change that to a 1. This is already a 1, so we're going to bring that 1 down. So it's going to be 1 times 6, and then change this to a 0, which makes the x go away. And then this negative 1 it doesn't have an x, so it actually just goes away. And so what we end up with is 3 times 3 is 9. So that would be 9x squared minus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 x to the 1 power plus 6, which is that. Okay, so 9x squared minus 8x to the 1 power, to the first power, is 8x plus 6. That's the derivative. So that tells us the slope of that line at whatever x value we care about. Or if you have something like this that's far simpler, here's, this is x to the 1. So we take the 1 down, so it's going to be 1 times 5 and then change this to a 0, and x to the 0 means it's gone, and there's no x here, so that's gone, and so the derivative for this guy is just 5, which makes sense because this is the, the simpler y equals mx plus b single lines. So that means that every single value of this line, the slope is always going to be 5, is what that's showing. Okay, so if we were in person, we would split up into groups, and you'd figure out the derivatives for these things. Um, we'll do one of them. We'll do this first one here. So this is going to be, we follow the power rule. We bring the 2 down. So it's going to be 2 times 3. And then we change this to a 1. And then this is already a 1. So we bring that down. We say 1 times 4. And then change this to a 0. And then this goes away because there's no x on it. And so the answer is going to be 2 times 3 is 6. So it's going to be 6x minus 4 is the derivative for that guy. That's tedious, though. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is use a different website. So Desmos can't figure out the derivatives for you. But there's a website called Wolfram Alpha that does do the derivatives for you. And you can just type like regular English language to do this. Um, so if we go to the internet and go to wolframalpha.com, what we're going to do is figure out the derivative of this equation here without doing any of the power rule stuff. We can just come and type derivative of 3x squared. So the way you get that exponent in, in typing in Wolfram Alpha is you use that caret symbol right there, which is um, the symbol on your 6 key. So if you do shift 6, then you'll get that. So 3x squared minus 4x plus 8. So if we run this, it should tell us the derivative. So the derivative of 3x squared minus 4x plus 8 is 6x minus 4, which is what we found when we did it by hand, which is great. Um, so let's say we have this negative 2x to the fourth minus 2x plus 100. I don't want to do the power rule for that. So I'm just going to say negative 2x to the fourth minus 2x plus 100. Run that, and it should show us that the derivative is negative 8x cubed minus 2. And that is the answer. Um, we could have done that by hand, like bring down the 4, so it's negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8 and then change that 4 to a 3, so x cubed, which is what we have, negative 8x cubed, and then this x disappears. So that is the right answer. 
but we didn't have to calculate it. We just had to um, type it here into the website and it figured it out for us, which is wonderful. That is what you should do all the time in this class. Don't do this stuff by hand ever. Um, so Wolfram Alpha is your friend. Okay, the last calculus -y thing we need to show here is this idea of partial derivatives. Um, this power rule thing of moving the, the exponent down and multiplying it by the coefficient and reducing it, that only works if you have one variable, just an x. If you have a utility function like this, though, where you're saying the utility you get from x and y, like pizza and um, ice cream, you can't figure out the slope of this thing because you have an x and a y. You have two different variables, and so there's no derivative here. Um, there's no slope at any point because you have two different things you're working with. You're working with both x and y. So what you do is you type this into Wolfram Alpha and it will tell you what the derivative is. Um, that's all you really need to know. If you care, what we really do is you figure out the derivative for the x part and pretend that the y is um, just a number. So if we look at this, if we say let's pretend y is 4, or whatever number, then you can figure out the derivative. So you would get rid of the, the x and you'd keep the y. So the first derivative for x, y with respect to x is just y because the x goes away. And then you do the same thing for the y part. You pretend the x is a number. So you figure out the derivative for the y part and then that, get, that gets you the partial derivative for both. And then if you divide them by each other, the x part over the y part, that gets you the partial, the partial derivative for both. Again, you don't have to do this by hand. Wolfram Alpha will do this for you. So let me show you. If we say derivative u equals xy, and we run it, it will show us the derivative of the x part. It will show us the derivative of the y part. And then we just have to put it in a ratio here. So this first one here, it says partial derivatives. Here's the x part, so it's y. And here's the y part, which is x. And so there's our y over x that gets us that formula there. That's all you need to know calculus-wise for this class. Um, on problem sets, if I do the derivative for you, I will tell you. Um, if I don't, I will also tell you. And I will say, here's this formula. Figure out the derivative for it, which means go to Wolfram Alpha and type it in and figure out the derivative. Don't worry about doing the power rule. You don't need to worry about that um, for this class. If you really care or if you want to do it manually to, to prove yourself neat, um, but you don't have to make the computer do it for you. So that's all the calculus you need to know for this class.